In this video today, the goal is to make a lot of stuff happen. I want to finish up on body work 100%. That's going to include priming the entire car, blocking the entire car, doing any more necessary body work, priming the car a final time, then turning my attention to the interior, and we are going to uh, paint the page. Paint the we're going to paint the cage. We're going to be painting today the page. The cage. The cage is going to be painted, and a lot of other stuff is going to get done as well. Hey now, you're watching the leader of the free world that sometimes seems to believe he's the commander in chief of Baskin Robbins channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So the first thing that I want to focus on is kind of regrouping, cleaning up the entire car and seeing exactly where I'm at with my bodywork. I believe that I am done, but when I prime the entire car and block it out, that block and guide code is not going to lie. So let's go ahead and prime the entire car right now. Now that we laid down that primer and it looks pretty good, we gotta give it some time to dry before we guide coat it. Now what the guide coat is going to do in just a few words, I'm going to rub the guide coat all over the entire car, then I'm going to block out the entire car. Anywhere where the guide coat is not removed from is a low spot, so you either have to keep working it or it might require a little bit more filler. So using guide coat is going to ensure that every single square inch of the car is going to be dent free and that's, uh, that's how I like to do it, making sure the car is as good as possible. Now that the guide coat is laid down, I have a large arsenal of different tools and blocks that I like to use as I'm going over the car. Longer blocks, shorter blocks, square blocks, and round blocks. The round blocks I like to use on some of the radiuses, radii, radiuses around the fender arches. I like to use the round block or the square block. The shorter ones are really good to get into the areas like up and around the windows. The longer ones, the longer the better, but you can only use what you can in the area that you have to be working. So let's go ahead and get the car blocked out. Do any more body work that is required in order to get this car as straight as possible. Then we're going to be priming the car for the last and final time.
at this point, the primer is done 100%, and I'm still going to be sanding the entire car down with 600, but I want to save that until I'm actually ready to go. So the outside of the car is going to stay like this for quite a while. Now I want to turn my attention to the inside of the car. I want to get everything clean because the inside of the car is eventually going to be painted, but before we paint the inside of the car, I'm going to work towards painting the cage because I want the cage to be masked off then paint the inside that way if any overspray lands on the floor I can just clean it up real quick as opposed to painting the entire floor then doing the cage and worry about masking the floor there's just um there's a lot of ways to get to the same result and you just got to think logically what's going to work best for the circumstance and for the job that you're doing so let's get the inside cleaned out stripped take out the wire harness the fuel cells got to come out the seats got to come out a bunch of that's got to come out and then we'll start working towards um prepping the cage All right, so at this point, the interior is completely uh, masked off. I masked off the headliner, anything that's going to be anywhere near the roll cage itself, I'm going to have to mask off. Also, one thing that I wanted to mention, I see this all the time when I'm watching other YouTube videos as well, it's so important to mask off glass for any car. Well, it's important to mask off everything in reality if you're going to be painting near your car, but this car where the whole entire thing is going to be sanded down once again, it doesn't matter as much, but the glass. It's so important, cover your glass. Even if you're working in the engine bay, you wouldn't believe how much overspray would get on your back window. So that's just one of those things. I masked off absolutely everything. I'm still going to throw a little bit more in the front window, still throw a little bit more on the hatch over there. But let's just go ahead and get into it. So what I'm going to be using first on a roll cage, it's very hard and it's going to be challenging to get around every single edge and angle. I know I'm not going to be able to get it 100% perfect because it is in the car and it's just one of those things. And one thing that I like to do to help me make it a little bit easier is I like to use a primer that's as close to the color that I'm painting as possible. In this cage, Kyle had already painted the front right here flat black so I'm just going to do a flat black on the rest of it just to match what he had already did and he did that before the windshield went in so that way by the time the windshield goes back in the car that's already set up and ready to go because I would have no way to do that so I have a black primer right here the reason why you want to use a black primer is because if you use like a light gray like a typical primer and then you spray everything and then you go back with your black base coat but you don't get as far as that gray got that area is going to stick out like a sore thumb but with this black primer and then i'm going to have black base coat and then my flat clear coat on top of that i never have to worry about introducing a new color that's a lot different from the color that I'm actually doing. So the cage is prepped. We eliminated all of the rust from it, wiped it down, scuffed it. It should be uh, should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and get this black primer mixed up. And then we'll do our black base coat. And then we will be doing our flat clear coat. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully this all goes well. Haven't done a cage in a little while.
All right, so with the cage, that came out as well as I would expect. Whenever I'm doing a cage or bars or anything along those lines, it is kind of challenging to make it look nice, thick, and consistent without getting any runs at all. So I did get a few runs here and there, but it just, it just happens. It's just part of the game. The best thing that I could recommend if you are going to be painting a page painting a cage is gun control. You want to dial in that spray nozzle. You kind of want, well the way that I look at it is I kind of wanted it to look like a spray can pattern if that makes any sense. Kind of a really tight fan. You don't need to be spraying this large of an area if you're just spraying a narrow bar. It doesn't make sense to have product spraying in the air above it product spraying down below it. It's just going to cause a bunch of overspray, get paint everywhere waste product and costs more money. So dial in your fluid tip, dial in your pressure, dial everything. Just, I would say if you're doing this, take your paint gun and play with it a little bit. I even make little adjustments as I'm going just to try to dial it in even more. This is a completely different game than painting like a hood, for example. There's a lot of technique that goes into painting a hood. When you're doing bars, you just got to do what you can with what you got. So overall, man, let me know what you think. In the next video, we are going to be getting into painting the actual interior. That's going to be the same color as the exterior. Everything's going to be red with a gloss clear coat on top of that. I'm talking show quality finish on the inside with the flat black bars. I think it is going to look really nice, clean, aggressive, functional, Bodivision-esque. It's going to look good. So as far as this video goes, I think that is going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe. We're nearly at 100K, man. I know I keep saying it. Subscribe. We can do it on this one. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.